Hello everyone, I'm Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe toy reviewer. And this video is going to serve as kind of a news and channel update video, as well as a toy haul. So you aren't going to be looking at my talking head for the entire length of this. Now I do apologize for the lateness of the video. I usually upload something like this. Well, I was planning on doing it more than a month ago. Unfortunately, 2020 has not really started out really the best. And while I have had to make a lot of preparations in order to work from home, unfortunately, everyone else is also working from home as well. So um, there, there's a lot of noise and a lot of things that I do have to take care of, uh, which interferes with my schedule. Now, I know even last year I wasn't really doing my best um, to make weekly videos and unfortunately I can basically no longer promise that for this entire year. I will try my best in making you know a, a consistent schedule but if like a week or two passes by <laughs> don't panic it's just me just trying to get a, a proper uh, filming schedule going. I want to thank my viewers for the success of my last review video, which was on the world's smallest G.I. Joes. Now I know I'd forgotten that Gentle Giant had actually made really small G.I. Joes as well, because I tend to think of them as only being that company which makes like 12 inch versions of the old molds. But they had actually made those really small G.I. Joes as well, I think uh, as an exclusive, either SDCC or New York Comic Con or something like that. I didn't think they looked particularly good, which is why I didn't pick them up. Even though the 12-inch G.I. Joes actually did look very good, um, I was like, man, those things are kind of expensive, and I don't think that they're really marketed quite well. But that's the thing. Um, it was within my wheelhouse, even though they're brand new toys. So I'm kind of glad that the reception for that type of video on what is ostensibly just a retro channel was received really well. So thank you for that. And because of the positive reaction to those modern toys, I think I can go ahead and actually get some more modern G.I. Joe toys to be reviewed on my retro channel. But if you're thinking about the Six Sense Jazzwares figures that uh, collectors have been sort of um, contemplating over and arguing over, um, no, I'm not buying those ones. Those are sort of Fortnite-inspired Jazzwares figures. I mean, I think they're really cool, really well done. Honestly, there are at least the prototypes look like better than some of the modern stuff that Hasbro themselves have been doing. I understand that, you know, the current generation is more of a video game playing generation. So if you're trying to capture the youth market, that's really where you have to focus your media needs. That being said, it doesn't have a video game attached to it, but who knows, they could be like skins that could be downloaded to Fortnite or some other military video game or something like that. I know a lot of modern collectors w would want to see like six inch versions of their beloved characters just in the exact same style as the vintage uh, uniforms and uh, stuff like that. I hope Jazzwares actually does do that because they, do, like I said, they do seem like a very quality um, company. I don't know, the, the figures coming out now are only coming out now because of the new movie coming out, G.I. Joe Snake Eyes. Um, not only will I not be getting the figures, I will not be reacting to the trailer and I won't be reviewing the live action uh, movie. I, I, don't, I don't really want to, to be doing uh, reviews of the live action movie. It's hard enough doing like the, um, the ones for the cartoons, which honestly, I still haven't found the proper platform or format to actually do them on YouTube. Um, but who knows? Who knows what the future will bring? I certainly don't know for the foreseeable year anyway. And while a lot of collectors are up in arms about those Fortnite-inspired action figures, what I found interesting was not a lot of people are talking about the other company doing G.I. Joe-inspired stuff, Jada Toys, which is mostly um, like a die-cast vehicle uh, maker. And they're making die-cast versions of classic G.I. Joe vehicles. Man, this is something that I've wanted for, well, basically since I laid eyes on G.I. Joe for the first time in 1982. Honestly, the 1983 Aviva, which is like a subsidiary of Hasbro, made these excellent toys, which I'll actually show a bit later. But this is really what I want to see, and I'm really happy to see it. 
Now, the first wave of these Jada toys has like the His Tank and the Vamp in it, which are the most collectible, the most army buildable of the, the stuff. And I'm really hoping a lot of people buy these because it'll hopefully inspire Jada toys to go ahead with the rest of the line. Now, even though they have slated this for later this year, like the first three vehicles, I think the Snowcat is included with that. There's no guarantee that the second and third waves are going to be ever coming out. They can just like cancel their contract with Hasbro if the first wave doesn't do very good. And the second wave has like the Sky Striker in it and the third wave has the Night Raven. I really, I really want to see diecast versions of those. I know the, the scaling is off from one toy to another within its own set, but you have to deal with that when it comes to like diecast miniatures. It's just, it's unfortunately the name of the game when they want to keep each of the items the same price. As far as updates to the channel goes itself, there's not really much that has changed except for two things which to me are kind of annoying. I'm not really sure how you as a viewer really feel about this, but one, I've had to have put the, uh, the age restriction warning at the front of my videos now. And two, I can no longer show real world firearms side by side with a toy firearms which I'm supposed to be comparing. I can no longer do that. That is, like I said, a YouTube thing in my 10th anniversary um, q and I sort of ranted about um, just how much of a nanny state that YouTube has become. And that's rather unfortunate. And that's unfortunate uh, result of people not wanting to move away from YouTube as a video platform. That being said, on with the toy haul. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm saying I'm passionate about the diecast versions of G.I. Joe vehicles coming out by Jada Toys uh, very soon. Because not only do I have all, all six of them loose, and in complete condition. I have all six of the US packaged ones, as you see here with the big, nice Iwo Jima inspired uh, poster art there. But I also have only four currently of the Canadian versions in the background here. And these were the only two countries that these die cast 1983 toys were ever made in. That's rather unfortunate. I would, I would have thought that um, a place like Britain, which is really big on uh, scale die cast military toys would, you know, have these, but I guess not. The Mobat, I didn't have at the time I was doing the review of this, and the flak in the background there, that is a recent purchase. So I have four of the six, unfortunately the last two, the Ram and the Vamp are extremely, extremely popular. They literally do not come up uh, uh, for sale that often, but they do and I will continue to search for them. And here's a bunch of singular figures which I picked up over the last year. Starting off with this 1992 Ninja Force Storm Shadow. Now I know I do have a reputation for not really liking G.I. Joe's ninjas or ninjas in general, but this guy actually really appeals to me. I really I actually kind of like the whole mechanism in there, even though I'm afraid it'll, it'll break at some point and I have no idea how to fix that. But honestly, I was planning on picking up just him Nunchuck and Slice and Dice. I actually would have gotten Slice, which is the um, the Red Cobra Ninja with the like the silver face mask, uh, quite recently. But unfortunately, my meetup was the Ontario uh, Toy Show, which unfortunately was canceled very abruptly. So I still have plans to have to actually contact the, uh, uh, the my fellow collector. And here's another, uh, a figure which a lot of people really don't like, this version of Duke. I think it's Duke version 3, I want to say, from 1992, the same year. As a matter of fact, all the figures on here are from 1992. Um, I didn't really plan that, but I guess that's really up to the year, which um, I haven't really uh, gotten all the figures yet from. It comes with this gigantic rideable cannon. He, like I said, he, he's a very nice figure once you get him in hand, but I can see that people looking at photos of him would be like, yuck, what is that? Same thing with the um, with this version of Firefly. Um, yeah, he comes with this big goofy like um, Beyblade thing, but honestly, once you get him in hand, he is kind of fun to goof around with. And that's really, really the point of the toy, really. Um, he's in no way a replacement for his old 1984 version. Let me just tell you that. 
And this is an odd little figure because I could have sworn that he was in um, my my 2019 update video because I could have sworn I bought him like like several years ago, but apparently not. Uh, he he is. Uh, a figure which I've used constantly for comparisons to other uh, Navy figures and in my stop motion action sequences so I don't I don't really know why he was left out of that but well here he is. Now originally wetsuit was supposed to complement this 1992 Barracuda G.I. Joe mini sub uh, and this was all supposed to be part of a month-long Navy theme which I had going on I think like May or something like that, May or May or June or something like that. But I had to cut that short in order to participate in Cobra Convergence 4, which is a whole bunch of uh, G.I. Joe and basically 1980s retro uh, toy reviewers on YouTube and other places. Uh, so we all kind of uh, team up. It seems like 2019 was the year which I was picking up nothing but propeller-driven aircraft. As we'll see, as the next couple of vi uh, video segments are just going to be helicopters. Starting off with this 1989 Mudbuster, which is a little fan-driven fan bomber of all things. Not really sure what this thing was ever based on, if it was based on anything in reality. This is actually a vehicle which I've seen numerous times, but I was like, well, that's on the bottom of my list. I'll get it later. And then one coming up with, you know, was perfect, really, and for a very cheap price. So that's why I kind of picked it up now rather than later. And the same thing with this 1988 Skystorm, sometimes known as the X-Wing Chopper or Crosswing Chopper, with its pilot uh, windmill. That's another, that's another vehicle which is fascinating in its execution and its history, but as a toy it was kind of like, uh, I don't know whether I want to pick that up or not, but I wound up doing it and it's actually a fairly decent toy actually. And now for even more helicopters with the 1991 Battlecopter with G.I. Joe Major Altitude in there. I think we've seen that figure a couple of times. I must have used them as an example a couple of times. But here is his opposite number, Cobra Interrogator and his Battlecopter. And here is a figure from the second series, 1992 Ace. Really, really nice figure. But as you can see, I don't have the uh, Battlecopter for him. That was uh, a planned purchase, but that sort of fell through because, like I said, some of my meetups are from Ontario toy shows, which have been cancelled. And here I have the Bellcopter for Ace's opposite number, the 1992 Heli Viper. And again, uh, I think I think my meetup for this guy was for uh, the April uh, uh, Ontario toy show, which has been I think pushed into July or whenever. Mm. I guess I'll just reschedule or just trying to have the guy ship it to me or something like that. It shouldn't cost too much extra. And finally, a 1990 Locust. This is the retail version of the Locust, as opposed to the one which came with the 1990 General. A really, really compact little uh, helicopter which really doesn't seem to really sit very well on its skids. And now for the big purchase of 2019, a fully armed and operational 1990 General. Yeah, this thing was kind of frustrating because oddly enough, it was missing like one item, which I was pretty sure was, you know, a fairly common uh, bit. I think it was like one missile or two, one or, two, one or two missiles. And for the life of me, I was like, these things are not coming up on the aftermarket, even though they really ought to be. But I finally got everything I needed to complete this thing. And this thing actually has working electronics, which is a very hard thing to find. As you can see, this thing comes with another version of the G.I. Joe Locust, which is kind of my incentive to picking up the, uh, the retail version. Both are really nice. I think this one works a bit better because the weird landing gear actually has grooves in it for, uh, in the, uh, on the platform of the General. Whereas if they just work by themselves, the thing really wants to tip forward. I'm not really sure why the design is like that, but I guess I'll get more into that when I do the review. Sooner rather than later, I really do want to review this thing because it is rather fun and I am rather excited by having this vehicle finally complete in my collection. 